Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, <clears throat> so we grew up in Connecticut, and uh, I put together a PowerPoint of my father's life. And I would take the PowerPoint across the country and do talks. And it, just this past year, I think it was in the spring, I said to myself, I really think I should write a book for my grandchildren. So they'll, they'll always remember because they, they're not going to always have access to, you know, the PowerPoint or, and so this will be, and besides I put in a lot of funny stories in the book that's not on the, that are not on the uh, PowerPoint. So we're going to talk about his early life first. Um, this is the life and art of Robert Childress, Connecticut Shoreline Illustrator. He was born in Lawrence, South Carolina. And he was given his first paint set by his aunt and uncle. And he never had an art lesson in his life. He was around eight years old. He would ride out on his pony and paint the red clay hills and farmland around his home. And that's just an early, early example <laughs> of an oil painting on board. And he first signed his works as a child, Bob C. He later... Um, changed it to Robert Childress. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. Oh, that, that was around eight or nine, ten. Very early. This was another um, house nearby in his um, childhood where he lived in South Carolina. And then he grew up. He went to Clemson University, got a degree in architecture, and to pay for Clemson, or to help his parents pay, uh, he would go door to door asking them if they'd like um, their coat of arms painted. And people were thrilled. So he would paint coat of arms, um, and he graduated in 1936. So since it, there was no call for architects at that time, because it was the Depression, um, he decided he would... Um, work with his artwork to make money. So he was first hired for the Charlotte, North Carolina Observer, the Charlotte Observer newspaper, and he did ad layouts. And his boss there had just so happened to have a niece living in upstate New York, and he really wanted Bob to meet her. <laughs> so he met uh, my mother in upstate New York and moved to Ithaca in 1938. He did a lot of illustrations for Grange League Federation, which later became Agway, which we all know. Um, his art promoted farm gardens in World War II and fertilizer, seed purchases for farmers and 4-H ads. And then he and my mother were the first to sample bird's eye peas. They would have to fill out, you know, rating cards. Mm -hmm. And this is just an exceptional pencil technique he had. All these are little fine, fine pencil lines. Reminds me of Norman Rockwell. Right? Yes, well, they were friends. They knew each other. Also yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I donated a lot of his commercial work to the Norman Rockwell Museum, as well as, as uh, his nor um, original Dick and Jane sketchbooks. So oh. that's all over at Norman Rockwell. Right? Oh, I'll have to go back there. <laughs> yeah, well, make sure you call and ask them first because they're still doing, um, I think they rotate their yes, exhibits. So. I haven't been there in a couple, well, This is chick starter, you know, to, to get your chicks yeah. off. Have your fertilizer in the barn by February 1st. It's all pencil. Isn't that amazing? amazing. The pencil, I, I could not. That, that's my sister. Oh my God. My yeah. Did she become Jane? No, that was my other sister. But this picture is in the book. And you'll see right next to this picture is her actually modeling for it. So she's bending over like this, and my mother's holding her leg up. <laughs> and so I've got that whole photograph in the book. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> And those are my two brothers. Yeah. Well, that, that looks like right out of the book. Oh, yeah. Country Gentlewoman. That was a cover for major uh, periodical. 
Um, so this is the story I love to tell. Uh, Duncan Hines lived in Ithaca, and he sold ice cream out of his garage. Oh, my God. And they, uh, my father and his boss and, uh, and uh, see, it was uh, one of the deans of Cornell they had lunch together, and they said, let's talk Duncan into franchising his ice cream. And my father said, well, how are you going to do that? And they said, well, we decided, we talked about it, and you're going to paint his portrait. And that's going to appear on every carton of ice cream. So they presented the idea to Duncan Hines. And Duncan loved the idea of having his portrait done and having it on every carton of ice cream. <laughs> and it later led to the cake mixes. And I remember as a little girl going into the grocery store and seeing the, the red cake box mix. And on the back was a little miniature version of the portrait. And they don't have it there anymore. But, yeah. Does anybody no, but that's Dunk. That's the portrait, and it's on the back of the Duncan Hines cookbook. It's an old paperback, obviously, <laughs> cookbook, but it gives you an idea. And that it appeared in Look magazine. There's the ice cream. <clears throat> and up there, the dairy farms were just wonderful. Uh, so he became intimately involved with Cornell. Um, he was commissioned to paint the deans, which are still hanging to this day, at the Mann Library um, at Cornell. Um, he was also commissioned to paint the portrait of U.S. Justice of the Supreme Court, Senator Burns. And then I have a, um, a note at the bottom here of his studio, his, our house and studio were in our home in Saybrook, Connecticut, Old Saybrook, Connecticut. So I have a little note here that he also did the, the portrait of the uh, principal of the Old Saybrook Elementary School. These are just some of the portraits. So he, if you, if you notice, he had um, most artists, they can either do people really well or landscapes really well. Very rarely can they do both. And I think he had a um, real talent. These, these, these are, is, is, I was going to say, they look like photographs. Yeah. They're photo, photographs of the portraits. Well, I know they are. Yeah. And the two on laying flat, the one on the left is my sister, who was the model for Jane. And the one on the right is my portrait um, for Sally. I was oh, Sally. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> That's my portrait. I have that. Oh. I have that in my home. <laughs> that is so cute. Yeah. And my mother's portrait, which I also have at home. And if you notice, um, he I don't know which came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> but this uh, pose in the, in the corner, way over here where she's holding up the can, mm -hmm. that is the same pose. So I don't know if he did that first and then said, said, I like that pose. I'm going to do her portrait that way. Or maybe he did the portrait first, and then they used it for Campbell Soup. Is that oil on canvas? Oil on canvas, yeah. Oh, that is yeah, and, and, and my port, all, um, all the portraits were oil on canvas, yeah. And then these are miniatures of my sister and myself. Oh, my gosh, that's so cool. I have the pins still, yeah. the, the flower pins oh, in a little yeah. box, yeah. I was about uh, 12, maybe. And then around 1946, they moved to Sabre, Connecticut to be near his job with Neely Art Agency. And that's when he shifted over from the, all the farm uh, work for farms and, and for uh, Grange League to uh, commercial. So he did Westinghouse, Coca-Cola, Frigidaire, wow. Mobile Tires, Traveler's Insurance, Buster Brown Shoes, Campbell Soup, and more. Um, and it was here at Neely Art Agency in New York City that Scott Forsman came looking for someone to update their Dick and Jane books. And they saw Dad's work and he, they said, that's the guy, we want him. Because his colors were so bright and crisp and um, his, he was able to put the humor into, the, into their expressions. And um, also, he was allowed, he had free reign to interpret the text that they mailed to him in any way he 
wanted with his illustrations. Not only that, he could change, he could make text changes. So uh, there's one example, I don't know if it's in this particular power, it's in the book where um, it said, come, come here, and he changed it to come with me. And it was accepted and published, and as a teacher, I realized this is huge to, to have an artist or illustrator be able to change the text. And not only that, you're changing it so that the child can read better or to interpret better by the choice of words. It's, it's amazing to me that. Can I ask a question? If you find a new illustrator, did your dad draw pictures? And, and then, or did someone draw pictures before your dad helped you put them together? Yes. And they were kind of the gray, muted colors of the 40s. So you see those older books, you'll see they're kind of um, not, not crisp lines, and they're kind of. So when I was little, it was, you know, in the early, yeah. late 50s, early 60s. Yeah. That was your dad. Yeah. He, he illustrated from 58 to 68. Yeah. So this, these are a couple of Coca-Cola Frigidaire ads. Uh, some of them were in the Saturday Evening Post. This is a picture of me that he, <laughs> with the real pictures of me putting on my shoes and they're on the wrong feet. And I'm so proud. <laughs> and then it became the American Weekly um, insert for the newspaper, like Parade. Dick and Jane? Yeah. 58 to 68 is what he did. Yeah. Okay. This is my sister, um, the one that was going over the under the barbed wire. And she, this is for um, Coronet Magazine, which is like a Reader's Digest. Mm. And she was waiting in the, brook. In the brook. Yeah. <laughs> and then he, um, there's a bigger painting of that. Yeah. But oh, neat. Do you think? Can I take a picture? Absolutely. Boy, Gary. Family in the picture, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me just. Um, That's 55. Can I walk out oh, from okay. the camera? Oh, it's, um, it's okay. You can go right back. Because you're going to cut it out. Yeah, he's going to edit the whole thing. I just wanted to let you know if you're interested in pictures. I have a lot of these in here that you wouldn't My have to. My brother just bought the book. Oh. He's, he's the lab. Yes. Okay, gotcha. All right. Good. I wanted to save you from all that work. <laughs> I was born August 25th, 55, so I wasn't even a month old. When that oh. Came out, when that came out. Now, this is my oh, other okay. sister that was the model for Jane. I have a question. Yes. How long do you have to sit and pose? Um, well, it was, my mother helped a lot with us in posing <laughs> and getting us into costumes and and getting us to st sit still. And then, then he would just um, photograph and work from the photograph. Oh, okay. So it wasn't bad. Right, right. So from 58 to 68, Bob illustrated the reading primers. His family were all models. I was Sally, Sue was Jane, my mother was the mother, and Brooks, my oldest brother, was the father because believe it or not, he was a freshman in college when I was in kindergarten, so it worked wow. out. They had three children up in Ithaca, New York. They were older, and then 10 years later, they had myself and my sister that was Jane. Oh, I love that. And this is where it says Bob had complete reign over how to interpret the text, where the characters were placed, and how to show meaning in oftentimes a humorous Rockwell-like way. So your dad was Bob? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was he an educator? No. No. He um, graduated from Clemson with a degree in architecture. And this is just one of his rough sketches. That's the sketch of the cover. And then. Oh, God, I remember. Oh, I just. And if I go I, back, I, I, I don't, I see the beach that ball. Yellow, the yellow book up in the corner. It's a, I think yeah. It's one of the first books. So see the beach ball. This is fun wherever we are. And then when you see it here, there it is. 
And that's me ringing the doorbell. That's the book I had. I don't know what this one is. Is that your dog, too? Yeah, we had a little dog named Curly who was Spot. In the, and we had a, a cat, Puff. And this is me and my mother walking down the sidewalk at our house. And that's going to be for the next sketch. Oh, it's a sketch. <laughs> it's beautiful. And then that's my brother, that one that was in college. Mm -hmm. And we're going down the slide. And he's, he's modeling as the dad. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a rough sketch. And my father would make little comments like feet out, you know, take the feet and put them out. <laughs> that reaching for the teddy bear, rough sketch. It's in the bulldozer or the bucket. And <laughs> that's me and my sister Sue looking surprised. You see the brick floor of his studio? Well, Oftentimes, I would be barefoot. I would love to run in there and just feel the coolness of the bricks. And um, he would involve us a lot in his paintings. He would say, come in here. I want to, I want to ask you something. Is this, is this green too green or is this blue too blue? And, you know, it made us feel like we were part of it, a part of whatever he did. And Nancy lives here in Connecticut? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because the two of us here. We're not born until we moved to Connecticut. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then the three older ones were off to college. So. <laughs> was your dad ever in a picture that he took you painting of? Oh, himself? Yeah, of himself. Uh, yeah, it was a Christmas card, actually. It's in the book. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. So during his years in Saybrook, he illustrated covers and stories <laughs> for Yankee Magazine and the children's magazine, Golden Magazine. Many local people were used as models. And in 65, we moved to Hadline, where in his three-car garage, he painted a mural for <laughs> the Hadley Liberty Bank? Savings Bank. Where, where is that? It's, it's uh, just up the road from Saybrook. Okay. Well, yeah, what, 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 what state? Connecticut. Connecticut, oh, yeah. Oh, still in Connecticut, okay. <clears throat> yep, and the mural is now at the Acton Library oh, in okay. Saybrook. My brother donated it. And in 1968, we moved to Madison, which is where I went to high school, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And he continued painting in his studio at home. Now, this is his, our family duck blind. I love it. My mother is wanting to go home. It's pouring rain. And this was a neighbor that modeled as the duck hunter. <laughs> so I ended up with the original painting, the gun, Winchester, and the box of shells, and the thermos. And I have it all set up at home, you know, oh. to go together. It's, I think he did it for Winchester Arms or Boy's Life. Probably. One or the other. I'm not sure which. This was the, uh, oh, that's awesome. this appeared as the cover for Yankee Magazine. Oh. I can and it. I there it is, right there. Oh, I, okay. Do you know what year? It, it says uh, July. 79. Oh, and then. That's me modeling in from I was in college when I modeled for that the one at the top. Is it in the fish? Is yeah. it actually a real lighthouse that exists now? Oh yeah, yeah, yep. Saybrook has two lighthouses, the inner light and the outer light. <laughs> and this I love is down to the sea, Rockport, Maine. No Rockport, Maine, yeah. And Alexander Graham Bell and his three grandchildren. And Alexander Graham Bell, his daughter-in-law, was it daughter-in-law? Yeah, no, his daughter. His daughter married a Grosvenor. And he and his son-in-law co-founded the National Geographic. And yes, this is Cape Breton, the family compound. Yeah, oh, oh. It's one place I really, I've been to Nova Scotia, but I want to go to Cape Breton. And then he decided from 68 to 83, he created the Great University Portrait Series. So he would travel out to the Big Ten universities, they're called the Big Ten, and the Ivy League, and he would photograph three iconic campus scenes, come home and paint them, and then work with the alumni agent, uh, associations to make them into prints and sell them through direct mail. 
and raise money for the alumni associations. Mm -hmm. And it worked really well. Um, the originals that he did for them are usually, most of them are in the alumni offices today still. And his last painting was Wellesley College and uh, painted in 1981. In 83, he was diagnosed with lung cancer and the doctor said he had three months to live and it was three months to the day that he passed and it was on Thanksgiving Day in 1983. So these are examples of his, these campus scenes, um, unbelievable. And people would buy them. No training, no, no, no formal training. So, you know, people would buy them after they graduated, and then they'd hang them in their office if they got an office job, and that's Wisconsin. Here's Wellesley, the last, there's the crew, oh, the, the, the crew boat. And, and I love the, the, the reflection in the water. Yeah, isn't that pretty? And they retired to New Hampshire in 77, and an occasional magazine cover. He continued painting universities. Um, once in a while, a story illustration for Yankee, and passed away in 83. But his life has been featured on New Hampshire Chronicles, New Hampshire Crossroads, New Hampshire Public Radio, NECN Cable News down in Boston, as well as national newspapers. And that's a picture of him at his easel. Where did he live in New Hampshire? Um, yeah. They retired in Warner. Yep. So. Well, some t somehow, when we were in Saybrook, they heard about going up to um, Webster, and there were cabins that were being rented in the fall. So every October, on Columbus Day weekend, they'd go up and rent a cabin and go fishing. They loved it, and they just the wildness and the, you know, so different from being down on the shore in Connecticut. They fell in love with it, and they just um, decided, well, when time is right, and Nancy's the last one is she's, uh, you know, in college, or we're going to sneak off. <laughs> and they did. They bought a house up in Warner. They're, they're both buried up there. Yeah. So I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's my dad, yeah, at the easel.